In China's J-series fighters, there is a fighter that has brought obvious influence to both J-10 and J-20 fighters. Until now, this fighter is still active in the mouth of domestic military fans. More importantly, the technical design of this warplane is not backward even today. However, it was eventually swept into the rubbish heap of history. The failure of the J-9 has become the regret of many people, but why did this aircraft eventually fail? The J-9 project was initiated because China was not satisfied with the J-7 at that time. In the 1960s, China had a chance to get a batch of MiG-21 fighters. China then copied the J-7 based on these fighters, but the overall performance of this batch of J-7 was not very good. Overall, the J-7's high altitude and high-speed performance was poor and it also lacked advanced radar. Since China and the Soviet Union were already at war at that time, coupled with the fact that the Soviet Union had put into service the Tu-22 bomber in 1962, the pressure on China's national defense was steeply increased, and there was an urgent need for an all-weather, high-altitude, high-speed, all-terrain air defense interceptor that could fight against the Tu-22 bomber as much as possible. Under this realistic demand, Shenyang 601 Institute proposed two improvement schemes for J-7, one of which was to develop a twin-engine version of J-7, the other was to change the traditional nose intake of the fighter into two-side intake and add fire control radar to the nose. The first improvement program resulted in the later J-8, while the second improvement program resulted in the prototype of J-9. Compared with the J-8, the design and development targets of the J-9 are amazing. The military hoped that J-9 could achieve double 26, i.e., the lifting limit reached 26,000 meters and the maximum flight speed reached Mach 2.6. In order to achieve this target, Chengfiz military engineering team specially prepared a turbofan six aircraft engine for J-9. This is a thrust can reach 13.8 tons of engine, but only rely on this engine, cannot let the J-9 enough to double 26, standard, so Changfei and boldly in the J-9 body with a duck layout. The biggest advantage of the duck layout is that it can increase the lift, improve the maneuverability and enhance the maneuverability of fighters, which is very suitable for the J-9 with high maneuverability requirements, but the disadvantage of the duck layout is also very obvious, that is, its maneuvering is more complicated, and it is extremely dependent on the advanced flight control system as well as the fly-by-wire maneuverability system. Because of this, in the 1960s and 1970s, due to technical constraints, the world could not find any fighter aircraft that adopted the duck-type layout, and the J-9's pioneering attempts made it a leader in the relevant field. After many tests, Cheng Fai decided on the duck layout plus two side air intakes for the J-9, and then started to build the prototype. At that time, the military gave the first flight plan in 1980, and Cheng Fai was confident that it could complete the J-9. But when it entered the manufacturing stage, Cheng Fai felt that the J-9 project was quite difficult to be gnawed. The first problem faced by Cheng Fai was the lack of suitable materials. At that time, most of the materials that Cheng Fai had to build the airframe were aluminium alloy. When the J-9 meets the flight speed of Mach 2.6, the airframe will be heated up rapidly due to the thermal barrier effect, and the aluminium alloy airframe will be melted. To achieve a breakthrough in this aspect of the material, it needs a long time to accumulate and try to break through, and it is difficult to have results without decades. The second problem was the engine. The turbofan 6 was considered one of the most advanced aviation engines in China at that time, but it could not make the J-9 reach the double 26 standard. It is worth mentioning that, at that time, when the United States and the Soviet Union technology competition is extremely intense period, the United States side launched the XB-70 Valkyrie three times the speed of sound war bombing, the Soviet Union side on the Sukhoi T-4, the United States to engage in the senior 71 Blackbird reconnaissance aircraft, the Soviet Union came out of the MiG-25, the United States and the Soviet Union on the performance of these up and coming fighters to publicize and show off to a large extent, which affects the judgment of the Chinese, and this put forward that Twin 26 was not a technical standard that could be achieved by the single engine fighters of the time. The third problem was that Cheng Fei's energy was limited. In the 70s and 80s, Cheng Fei did not only have the J 9 as a key project, but also took on the task of improving the J 7 at that time. Improving the J 7 could help China to relieve the pressure of air defense to a certain extent. 
While developing the J-9 could help China not to be afraid of the threat of the U.S. and Soviet advanced military aircraft, both tasks were important, but the improvement of the J-7, which was more focused on the present, was given a higher priority than the development of the J-9, and Changfei was forced to fall behind in the J-9 program as a result of the diversion of its efforts. By the time China entered the reform, an opening up phase in the 1980s, and the million disarmament policy immediately followed, the PLOF made strategic adjustments accordingly, and eventually the J-9 program was aborted. Many people regret the failure of the J-9 project, knowing that under the efforts of Changfei, the maximum flight speed of the J-9 can actually reach Mach 2.4, which not many fighters in the world can do. The fastest single-engine fighter plane in the world is the F-15 Eagle of the United States, which has a maximum flight speed of Mach 2.5. It has been widely used in many countries and regions around the world so far, and has quite powerful air-to-air -air and air-to-ground combat capabilities making it one of the main fighters of the U.S. Air Force. It is really difficult not to cause everyone to think, if the J-9 project did not die, and then with the development of Chinese aviation technology step by step to improve, J-9 will be able to achieve the double 26 standard beyond the F-15 to become the world's fastest single-engine fighter. Unfortunately, there is no turning back in history, even with the performance of the J-9, it is considered to be capable of fighting nowadays and it is impossible for us to go back and lift it up again. Furthermore, although the J-9 has never met us, the success of its design theory has directly influenced China's later avant-garde models, such as the J-10 and the J-20, which, as the world's only fifth-generation stealth fighter with a duck-type layout, and with China's further refinement of its aero engine and other technologies, has become a powerful blade that has made the United States fearful of the J-20. When the J-20 first came out there were people who questioned its use of the duck layout should not be included in the list of five-generation aircraft. To date, no country has this question. On the contrary, they would like to get a duck layout of the five-generation aircraft. But unfortunately, they cannot do it. And they would not have thought that as early as 50 years ago, China has been working on the duck layout. So who says that Chinese creativity is not as good as that of the West?